have the public. I don't have the I don't have the public hearing language in front of me. I have the preamble, but not the specific public hearings. Wait, actually, I do because you have. Let's see, the legal notice. All right, give me a moment. All right, I think I can wing something here. Is everybody here? Yeah, I, I, you know, the attendees are starting to show up. I think we can wait one more minute and then. Okay, all right. The official start time, 6.35. Um, I think for the hearings, it, it is anyways, right? So we can't start early. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Hi, Robin. Hi, Nate. Hey, Eddie. Michaela and Antonia. Hi, Jacinta. Hi, Jacinta. Jacinta, nice to meet you. <laughs> Uh, Hello, nice to meet everybody as well. I guess we have you with helping us. Okay, are we good to go? I think we're good to go, yeah. Okay, so it's 6.35 p.m. Um, I'm Robin Fordham, Chair of the Amherst Historical Commission, opening this uh, public meeting of the Amherst Historical Commission. Um, our preamble uh, to address open meeting uh, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law and pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021 extended by chapter 2022 of the acts of 22 and extended again by the state legislature on July 14th, 2022 and signed into law on July 16th, 2022. This meeting and the following public hearings of the town of Amherst uh, historical Commission is being conducted by a remote remote participation. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of meetings of the members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. A hyperlink to the hearing has been posted on the town's online calendar. Um, just pull up our legal notice and you know what I don't have I apologize I don't have the agenda in front of me Nate but I'm assuming that our first um item is a demolition hearing for 107 Blue Hills Road is that correct that is correct yes yep. okay so in that case I will uh open the hearing for uh the following Public hearing for demolition request for uh, 107 Blue Hills Road request to demolish a circa 1900 cold storage structure. Um, do we have someone to present on behalf of the applicant? I think so. If you're here in the audience and you're here to represent this project, you could raise your hand and it'll bring you over to a panelist. Can you hear me, Nate? Yes, yep. Uh, this is Rick Pomisano. Hi, Rick, thanks. Yeah, so you're also, um, the commission can hear you as well. Okay. I just wanna describe the structure and the request. Yeah, you, you can go ahead, Rick. Okay. Um, well, we were before the board to try to get this. I don't know if it's a root cellar or you've called it a bunker. We're trying to get this demoed. And because of the age of it, 
it had to go before the historical commission, which we're still not sure about the age of it. The owner has done more research. Nate has done some research. You had, I think Nate had thrown out around 1900, but we don't feel it's that old, especially considering some of the structure. It's got, it's got asphalt on the top and it was tested for asbestos and there's no asbestos in it. So we've been told that before 1960, if it had, if it had been built before 1960 with the asphalt, it would have asbestos in it. So I, I don't know how that pertains to the timeline to go to the historical commission, but that's where we're at. And when you're referring to the asphalt, you're referring to the roof? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll when share I say the roof, the, the roof is actually level with the ground. It's sunken in, so. Yeah. So is that, is that visible for everyone? Um, yep. Yeah. So here are images that were there. I, there's some interior images that were uploaded recently um, today. So here's, you know, more just, you know, these were included in the application. I did include some more photos today, Nate, of the inside so you can see it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it is a, a block interior. Um, And it's like a concrete floor. Correct. And the roof is solid concrete. It's a curious structure. It is. Okay, and any then, other comment? In the middle, Rick, is that a... Um, That's a concrete paint? support beam. But then, on, like in this image right here on the floor, the last image it looks like there's like a, a screen on the floor. Is that go? Is that a drain? It looks like a drain. There was debris. There's, there's sediment over it, so I don't really know where it drains to. Mm -hmm. And as you can uh, see, it's in disrepair. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, thank you. Do you have any more comment or we go um, ahead and start discussion? No, I, you know, I, I think I said uh, earlier that, you know, it's hard to trace any, any, um, anything to this, um, you know, to date it or to actually what farm it was, it was used by. So, you know, it was in, um, you can see it in like a 1956 aerial the cupola and possibly in a 39. Um, there was uh, definitely in the 30s even uh, farm roads that looked like they came to this area, but it's really hard. I, you know, there wasn't any documentation really. I looked through some of the farming history of Amherst and some other books, but there was no mention of this uh, structure. So, Um, so uh, the task before the commission today is a little bit different than our usual task. We're not looking right now for the question of whether this building is preferably preserved. We're looking at whether uh, we find it historically significant. Um, I wanted to start by saying that I pulled, because it's such a curious building and Amherst has a pretty marked um, agricultural history, um, I pulled out my um, applying the criterion uh, of National Register for evaluation for historic structures. Um, there are four criterion. Um, one is uh, criterion A is event, um, B is person, C is architecture. I don't think that this would fall under C or B, but certainly um, Criterion A event is meant to cover both individual events like um, a significant factory strike, but also um, larger social movements. So patterns of um, social culture that uh, create imprints on the landscape. Um, my concern here is that we haven't found anything um, that talks about this building. And that leaves me 
not feeling like I could say it's not significant um, because I don't know anything about it. Um, my inclination would be to um, ask for a little bit more time to do to 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 do a little bit more um, thorough research. I mean, the things that I'd like to look at are checking um, ancestry.com against the owners of the property to see if you could find a link to any sort of farming capacity. Um, I'd also like to be able to look at Genealogy Bank, which seems to have more um, local Amherst papers. So if you find uh, a period in time where there's an owner who has uh, some sort of reflection in the census records of farming, and then you can search the newspaper, you might find a little bit more information there. So that's where I'm leading, and I'm happy to hear other commissioners weigh in. Could I, could I say something for a minute? Sure. So the owner um, has spent, Alicia Hansen has spent a significant amount of time at the library, and I'm not sure who she had spoke with, but they've spent hours researching this and can find nothing on it. And if you had found something, you know, Nate, it took a while for Nate to get back to me because he was researching it also. But my question is, depending on what you find, this structure right now, it's not sound. It needs to be taken down. She's gotten prices on it to get repaired. You're talking somewhere between thirty-five and forty-five thousand dollars to repair this structure. They're not going to pay it. So that's where we're kind of we're kind of in a bind here. We need that structure down, so yeah. we don't and, really know and, where to go. Right. If it, this it, the challenge of the historical commission's um, charge in terms of these matters is to follow the procedure to a certain point um, because we ask for a bit more time for some research doesn't necessarily mean that we're done denying demolition and I certainly um, take all those factors into account and um, I would suggest it wouldn't be more than one more meeting cycle um, that would be necessary to just make a clean um, um, record of the case um, but uh, I just want to emphasize that um, we're I think we as the commission are aware of that. It's it's tricky because um, when people come before us for demolition requests, there is usually a sense of urgency. And that makes it a little bit challenging um, to check off all our boxes so that we can move forward. But I want to stress the 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 that we take all that into account. <laughs> okay. I, I brought over the owner if um, if you want to make some comments. Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Alicia Hansen. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, there you're great. I just thought I'd join um, to be available to answer any questions. Like Rick said, we did spend better part of a day in the special collections unit at the library about three months back and had the help of the librarians there to try to understand what this structure was built for, when it was built, and and with their help, we you know, we could determine that in, um, as you said, Nate, I think early 1930s, there had been a lot of farming land over here. And so there had been structures in this area, including barns and um, fruit stands and all sorts of stuff like that, but nothing that could be directly be tied to this exact property um, because the property was not zoned off until 2002 for, for where we are now. Um, and, and just to be clear, we do have pets um, who are regularly in our yard. We have children who are regularly in our, our yard and this structure is, is very unsafe and we don't feel comfortable letting the pets and our children out in the yard um, at this time. So, so we are looking to expedite this. Thank you. Do you have any, any comment from commissioners? Patty? Um, so thanks for adding the interior photographs. That's really helpful to see inside. Um, <clears throat> and clearly it's not an ancient Etruscan tomb, although it has proportions that are very similar. So I don't want that to confuse anyone, but we're not looking at something that's, as Robin said, likely to be architecturally significant. Um, however, given where it is and which side of Amherst it's on related to the Hadley farm and, and the sort of the landscape around 116. Um, 
the East Hadley side of, of Amherst, it does intrigue me as to what it might have, what its story is as it was first built, you know, whether that's 1900 or 1920 or whatever that concrete block, it certainly could be in that time frame. <clears throat> um, it is quite close to um, the very interesting little neighborhood um, on Kendrick Place where Marshall Steinbeck Collision is located, which is also another little grouping of um, sort of commercial industrial kind of one story, two story buildings that are intended to be service orientated. Um, so I'm curious about whether this had a commercial um, purpose at some point or whether it was just a root cellar, as somebody said, for the families who lived in the house. Um, I think those are unanswered questions at this point. And, you know, if it is going to come down, um, and I certainly understand your reasons why you'd like it to come down. I think we need to do our best to kind of get to the um, the story of this building. Um, I'm very curious about the cupola. Um, that's a very high architectural style element to what is a very nondescript, very functional, you know, bare bones type of structure. Um, so that's a little bit kind of intriguing to me, you know, that here's a building that sort of bur is burned into the ground, <laughs> um, not in great shape, but on top of it is this very pretty cupola. So maybe that's something we should just check on. And, you know, I, I, I hear your urgency, but I also think that, as Robin said, we need to kind of do the due diligence that is needed to figure out what happened there. Pat? I, I'm following up and, and agreeing with everyone's comments, but I guess Nate has done some research and Alicia Marie, it sounds as though with the help of the um, special um, collections at the library and uh, so Alicia Marie, was there anything that you found that could give better understanding of this structure? No, there really wasn't. We looked through so many books and we looked through a lot of the town records of um, what has been owned and what each property paid taxes on. And we could not find anything that made sense for right here. Um, I do have the names of the, the different people who've owned land in this general area since early 1900. Um, but we really, in, in reading all of the deeds, we could not determine what was what was here. And so we're, we're in reading the deeds, was any of that farmed land? I think it was all farmland. Yeah, because if, if we call this a coal cellar, um, it certainly would be a storage facility for produce to 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 sell it or use it at a later date um but i as hetty said i can understand your urgency if you've got young children and pets who want to be in that space um but it might behoove us to just do one more brief search to to find out if if there's anything we should know more about this structure Do you all mind? Um, it... oh, I just, I, I feel like, <laughs> I, I don't want us to belabor this too much. Too much. I, I think, I, I just want to, I just want to get Michaela and Antonia's um, comments, and then I'm going to make a suggestion for how we might proceed that I think would be useful to everyone involved. So if that's okay, Alicia Marie. <laughs> okay. Antonia and Michaela, do either of you want to weigh in? take that as a no <laughs> I mean considering the research that's been done already I anticipate that the likelihood that we would find it historically significant is extremely low okay Antonia I think it's it's hard to know without the information um so I think I guess I'm kind of struggling on where to land um but yeah me too <laughs> 
Okay. Well, let me let me propose a roadmap here. Um, you know, I think Hattie and I would probably both agree that looking at this property, there is something significant about it. Now, significant, significant does not mean properly preserved for um, our applicants. We just want you to realize that um, we can uh, determine a, a property to be significant and still um, agree to have the demolition go forward. Um, I think that's probably where we're heading. I would feel comfortable with a motion um, to uh, see this as a as a his, uh, uh, historically significant building based on its association with um, the trends of agriculture in the town of Amherst, even though we can't trace exactly who it belongs to. And then uh, we can move on to uh, decide whether it's preferably preserved, which is an entirely different question. And um, I think it's very different standards. And I think um, if people are comfortable with that, um, we could, I, I can ask Nate if that, he thinks that's a good way to go and we could move forward. That's my, with the pressures that we're under right now, um, I would I would put forward a motion that it, that it is significant that we could vote on. Uh, if that vote fails, then the demolition permit goes forward. If it passes, then we would um, vote on whether it's preferably preserved. And if uh, we voted that it was not preferably preserved, then the demolition could go forward um, with maybe a condition or two. I think um, maybe Hattie or I would like to do a site visit and just um, get pictures so that we could do a, um, a photo map of it um, for, for, uh, for historical documentation. Nate, you wanna weigh in on all that? Yeah, I mean, it is, it's really difficult to age it. I mean, it could have been, I was just looking online while you're talking, I mean, it could have been associated with the construction of 119 Blue Hills in the mid fifties. Um, uh, and you know, it was a former um, um, Amherst College student, I think, um, and, or, and a veteran, but, you know, like I said, there wasn't, um, you know, if we wanna do, I mean, we could continue the hearing for like two weeks, if we wanted to, my other suggestion was we just continue the hearing and try to do more research in the short amount of time, um, you know, or we can make a motion and um, move forward that way. I don't, you know, there's, I guess there's probably two ways to do it or a few ways to do it. Um, yeah, I'm just not, you know, if it'd be great to get more documentation, it's interesting. Um, I guess some of the town clerk's records are scanned. I'm sure the, uh, Special Collections was looking at that, as you said, what was taxed. And so, you know, like I said, I, I looked through certain books too, just um, there wasn't much reference to any, you know, um, to this area. You know, so even like the farming history in Amherst, they didn't talk a lot about what happened in this section of town. It's in other sections. And so, it's, I mean, you know, there could be something. It's just, I don't know how much we're going to unearth. And then Robin, to your point, would it, would the structure be significant enough that it should be properly preserved? But right. Uh, I mean, I think the question is: Do I, if you know, if we take a vote on significance at this point, um, you know, I feel comfortable with that in the sense I'm making an argument that it's. I mean, it doesn't look like uh, a family's root cellar. I think Hetty and I agree on that. That it looks of a more commercial level, and that based on its physical representation, I would make the argument that, yeah, that's, you know, this is a significant structure that has something to do with agriculture that we don't quite know exactly <laughs> uh, enough about, particularly about, but we have enough, enough in information to make that determination. And then we could uh, move forward. So asking for two weeks, that's useful, but at the same time, once a building is demolished, I mean, the only thing that we really lose is the building itself the capacity to get the information is always there. So that doesn't really, you know, the demolition of the building doesn't preclude getting more information on it in order to document it if it's gonna be demolished anyway. So um, in that case, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and move, uh, move that the commission vote that this building is historically significant. We can take a vote if we have a second on that motion. Uh, Robin, can I ask you a question? Yeah. So you're talking about a time frame. If if indeed you do more research on this, I'm sure you I don't know if you realize we've I applied for this permit two months ago 
And no, right, right now we're talking about moving forward so they can actually get to a vote about whether it's preferably preserved so we could actually possibly vote that it's not preferably preserved and the demolition could go forward as of today with maybe a, a quick visit for some photographs. Well, I'm not familiar with how historical buildings get preserved, but if this goes forward where you deem it that it should be preserved, who pays for that? Is that the homeowner's um, responsibility? If So the, the vote is a two-vote process. So the first thing we're going to vote on is the significance. If it is voted that it is historically significant, then we would vote on whether it was preferably preserved. If we voted that it wasn't preferably preserved, the demolition permit would be granted. If we voted that it was preferably preserved, then we would determine a demolition delay and eventually the delay would expire and you would be able to demolish it. That's that's basically the lay of the land. So I don't think that we're getting to that last scenario. I'm just trying to move us through the significance part so that we don't have to delay further. So if that makes sense. <laughs> does that make sense? Alicia Marie, does that make sense to you what I'm explaining? It does, yeah. I I think I will wait to hear the outcome of yeah. the first vote to understand yeah. the next part. And I understand that it's challenging for people who come forward with demolition because we have such a different charge. We're not here to decide whether something is safe or not. We're here to decide its historic significance, and that can be frustrating for people. So I, I appreciate that. And I hope that I hope in a few minutes this will be very helpful. <laughs> Pat, did you have a comment? <sighs> oh, you're muted. <laughs> Sorry, um, I'm just struggling that with all the efforts to research the structure, there is no provenance. It, it, it can't be identified in terms of when it was actually built, by whom, and for what purpose it was used. And so I, I, I appreciate that we could research it further, but, but I, I'm struggling with that notion that it's totally an unknown structure. I'm struggling with it in terms of the capacity to not be able to make a decision one way or the other. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, precisely. Yeah. So I, mean, I, I, just... you know, that, I think that I don't know how few people feel about, uh, I mean, I, I feel like there are, I'm trying to be timely and there are a lot of different um, agenda sounds too negative, but everybody has sort of a different agenda right here. And I'm trying to find a balance between all of them. So every commissioner has the right to vote how they feel. They can also abstain if they feel they cannot make a decision. Um, we could take two more weeks. We probably wouldn't find that much more information in two more weeks. We can still locate more information later. Um, if anybody feels like a vote of non-significance would threaten this building, then that's, I think, where where we get into trouble. But if if that's not the case, I think I'm I'm making a motion, which no one has to second, but I'm making a motion that we should vote on the significance factor now based on the information that I have. And you can go up or down and you can abstain. Oh, then I want to second you on this because okay. I think we need to move forward. Yep. Have another so Henny has seconded the motion. So the motion before the commission is that we vote uh, that the, the motion is to approve this as a historically significant structure. So I'm gonna take a roll call vote uh, and I'm gonna start with Pat. I, I'm gonna abstain for the reasons I just stated. Okay. Um, uh, Hetty? Um, yes. Okay. Uh, Antonia? Abstain. Okay. No, no, I'm going to be calling on Nate in a minute. Uh, Michaela? No. Michaela is no. And I'm a yes. So the motion fails. Um, Nate, can you tell me if we don't have a majority, if we don't have a four-person majority on the vote, does it just... Uh... No, I mean, it was 2-1-2, two, two, so it okay. passed. Oh, it passes. Okay. All right. Good. Then we're done with that part. So we've decided that it's a historically significant structure. 
Now we can move on to a discussion or we can go straight to a motion if anyone wants to put one forward that it be preferably preserved. And if anybody has any concerns about anything that they want to see happen before this building were demolished, speak or forever hold your peace. <laughs> Anybody? Well, I, I would put forward a motion that it's not preferably preserved. Okay. Um, but that, you know, there's time to go in and take adequate documentation. You've already given us quite a lot of good photographs, but they were taken in the snow. And that is a bit problematic for me. Um, <clears throat> I'd also like to see, a, you know, I'd, I'd like to get a better sense of where the where this structure is in relation to the house. Um, that would just be good to have. Um, so that's my that's my motion that we vote that it is not preferably preserved. Okay, so there's a motion on the table. Do we have a second? Hold so I can just say with the conditions that you know there is a ability to document. Yes. Yeah. And then, um, you know, it's not associated with this house, the house, the property that's located on the house is relatively new. So, you know, you can look at 107, but like I said, it could have been associated with 119 Blue oh, Hill okay. or, you know, some other property, but it's not 107. Oh, okay. So I'm sorry. I misunderstood. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, my, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, but it's part of the lot now, right? It's poor Annalise's problem. <laughs> Here, I'll share my screen. Um, so here's a 1956 aerial. Uh, here's, this is 119 um, Blue Hills. And here's where the structure is. And you can see some roads and you can see, you know, uh, uh, probably is the, the cupola and the um, shadow of where the retaining wall is and the entry and some, you know, some things stored here. And so, if I turn the uh, property lines on, you know, here's here's 107 now, right? But it wasn't part of 107, um, you know, back in the um, what I say that was that was that 50 that was 56. So, um, you know. Some, may, sometimes I wonder if this house, you know, was is uh, is stucco and concrete. I wonder if they built this. You know, if we look at the 1939 aerial, is um, that house still standing? In the in the yeah, 119 mm -hmm. is 119. Okay. And so here's the 39 aerial, and you know, this is still like a wooded area. Um, and if I turn off the property lines, you know, here's where the structure is located in here and you know i looked um on a number of homes down northampton road all the way to where the ginger garden is and i was just thinking that it could be that this land was farmed you know from here and then there were some farms up on amity and a farm here and it was just really difficult to make any connections so um you know it, you know it it could have been that when they built um 119 they you know they're like, hey, let's just do this. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, it's really interesting without any other uh, documentation. Yeah. Um, you know, so here is fifty six again. So it's you know, to me, that's you know, that's clear that it was there then. I just can't. I don't have much more than that. Um. So we have a motion before the commission uh, to vote the building not preferably preserved. Uh, do we have a second after which we could have continued discussion or move to a vote? Um, I'm willing to second the motion to find that it should not be. Okay. So we have a second. Any further discussion? Okay, seeing no further discussion. Uh, Nate, am I supposed to have public comment at some point in here? <laughs> oh yeah, there's a few members of the public here. We could Maybe before we vote on that, we'll sure. entertain some public comment. Still discussions point. Okay, so if you are a member of the public, uh, you can raise your hand if you would like to speak at this time. Uh, 
I'm not seeing any hands being raised. No. Okay, so seeing no public comment um, and no further discussion, uh, we'll have a roll call vote. Uh, Antonia, the motion before the commission is to vote the building not preferably preserved. Um, I agree. Pat. Yes. Petty. Yes. Uh, Michaela. Yes. And I vote yes as well. So the vote is five uh, to zero to uh, affirm that the building is not preferably preserved. When the demolition can go forward, the commission would request, uh, do you, Hedy, do you wanna do a site visit with me where we do photos like we did last time, maybe within sure. a week? Yeah. Okay. Is that agreeable to the applicant? Okay, great. Beth, reach out to me anytime. I work from home, so I'm here whenever you okay. are ready. Okay, Thanks. probably this weekend. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, yeah, Rick. We'll coordinate it through Appreciate me and then we can get um, a, you know something going in the next, this week or next week if that works for everyone. Thanks for everyone's patience with the process. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm gonna go off camera now. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. Um, so now do we take a vote to close that hearing? Mm -hmm. I don't think, don't, can we just go on to the next item on the agenda? Next item on the agenda is another hearing. I think hearings have to be opened and closed. Is that correct? Dave? Okay. <laughs> I think the vote, you know, if you want to take a motion to close it, but I'm assuming the vote. <laughs> Okay, uh, so a motion to close a uh, hearing for the demolition of 110 Blue Hills Road Storage Facility. So I Second? make a motion to close. Okay, all right. Second. Uh, okay. <laughs> Pat, Pat Whatever. Seconded. I've motioned, Pat has seconded. We're gonna, uh, I've, ever, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, aye. Okay. Um, so now we are going to open the hearing for uh, demolition to request a uh, 68 McClellan Street, uh, Joel Greenbaum request to demolish circa 1860 single family farmhouse and a circa 1930 detached garage. Uh, Joel Greenbaum is in our audience and I see we're gonna promote him to a panelist so he can present to us. Hi, Joy. Oh, there, now you're unmuted. Thanks for joining us. Sorry, video. Okay. There you are. Hi, Joel. Nice to see Thanks you. Thanks for your patience. <laughs> Thanks for your patience. <laughs> so Thank tell you. us about your, what? Thanking my wife for setting me up here. Oh. <laughs> Uh, well, Hello. thank you for Hello. having me. Yep. Um, I'm a little humbled today. I've spent a majority of my life fixing up houses, not taking them down. But um, this is just one of those houses that I don't feel has that much architectural significance. It's not particularly sound structurally. And I think that my, I don't know if you're familiar with what I was proposing in its place, but I just think it'll enhance the property and enhance the neighborhood a lot more. So that's okay. kind of why I'm here today. Okay. Nate, do you wanna go over our documentation? Yeah, the local historic district, I'll just mention, reviewed this today at a public hearing. And they, you know, they had a um their decision contingent upon what the commission did tonight. So, you know, they um, you know, there was some back and forth about the different roles here. So this does, uh, you know, it it's in a local historic district. So there's two reviews. Um, you know, in the application, there was the inventory form and images and uh you know, the, you know, the structure has been documented and built in the, um, you know, 1860s and there's, you know, chronology of owners. There has there wasn't too much of an architectural description in the updated inventory form. 
you know, I think there's a lot of uh, different owners over its history, just being it close to uh, the center of town, but nothing that seemed to stand out. Uh, and then, you know, the garage seems older than the property car just because of the sandbar map and maybe what the material is made out of. Again, you know, not, you know, it could be, as, you know, I don't think it's, I think the property car said 85, which, you know, to me, it's clearly older than 85, but, you know, it may not be um, as late, you know, as early as the thirties, it's hard to say, but the block, the, those center blocks look pretty old. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't have, you know, too much. It's a, you know, pretty modest house. It is, you know, one of the neighbors for, pictures up again. yeah, let me share my screen. One of the neighbors, the local historic district did say that it's a nice example of, you know, they would call it a worker cottage. Um, so here's just one West view. And I guess I'm not, I guess I'm, let me just share, um, Let's do a new share and do uh, this. So here's the Sanborn map and here's the property here. Uh, and, you know, there's a number of outbuildings, um, right? And the house is pretty relatively unchanged, but, you know, most of these outbuildings, maybe the garage remains, it's hard to say. And then in terms of the images, here's uh, the house today. So here's street facing, uh, here's the west side. Here's the rear of the house and the back porch. And what else do we have? Here's the garage and then the, um, you know, what is the front facing east side doesn't face the street. And here's more images of the garage. So that's, those are the images. Okay. So before us is the question is whether this uh, commission determines this building to be preferably preserved or not. Uh, anybody want to start off our discussion and, and ask any questions of Nate or Joel? And feel free. Um, I mean, I would say feel free to share. Uh, one of the things that I think about historic preservation is that, you know, our these decisions are complicated. I think our gut feelings have a little bit to do with it. So it's fine to say, oh, this, you know, if this house speaks to you, that's fine. <laughs> um, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be a, you know, a specific reference to something academic or, um, you know, feel free to guide the discussion how you feel. May I speak? Oh, sure. Thank you. So this particular house, aside my feeling, you know, aside from the fact that it's not architecturally special in my mind, um, structurally, it, it's not great. Um, Two thirds of the house is unexcavated, you know, it sits on dirt. Uh, the north and south end of the foundation is falling in. Um, the floor joists are cracked. Um, this guy's a really low second floor. I'm not even sure you can even stand up there. Maybe in the center you can. And, um, you know, it has a very steep stairs. I mean, these are all, you know, characteristics of this house. But there's just a point where houses just aren't worth investing a lot of money into. And um, especially with the new energy code that takes effect July 1st, a house like this would be so difficult to meet the criteria. Um, so I've just, you know, my experience over the years is when it comes to a house like this, you're just better off starting over, which is not easy for me to say. I mean, I've fixed up some doozies and uh, and they've come out nice. Well, and but actually, I, think... I was going to ask, I mean, um, and Joel and I know each other from being uh, sort of semi-neighbors, not neighbors, but um, he owned the property next to my property on Halleck Street. He owns it now. 
Um, and so I'm very familiar with uh, your whole business. And Pat, I see your hand raised. I just want to ask a quick question, of Joel, because um, I think it's interesting to have somebody um, coming before us who does have the experience of rehabbing so many of our historic structures. There's um, the little kind of mustard and green one down the street. Um, 16. So you own that one as well, right? Yes. And that's a, a similar footprint. I'm just curious um, about your expertise about how those two differ because they are kind of similar um, in you know in in their in their kind of diminutive size and um, they are similar. Sixteen, I think, had a nicer foundation. It has a full basement. It has a it doesn't have a full second floor, but it has a larger second floor. You know, the, on the second floor of that house, there's a bathroom and two uh bedrooms um i actually had to come to historic for that too because if you remember above the tub the roof used to slant you couldn't stand up in it so i had to come before you to extend the dormer 36 inches so you could stand in the shower but no that i mean that was that house was pretty rough but it but it was solid you know mm -hmm. it was solid it was structurally sound it, it you know i think it was a little more architecturally significant honestly it's a cute house it had asbestos siding on it i mean it looked pretty bad when we bought it yep. okay. and then we um, also did number 30 right jody simpson's house we finished a year ago and that was that the putty uh, one that was a rough one also yeah the putty yep. Yep. Came yeah 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 right. yeah mm. Yeah, I mean, there's a nice collection of them down there. Um, yeah. it's, so, it's, I mean, it's, you know, I, I like fixing up old houses. So I didn't mean to right. cut you off, Robin. I like it. I mean, I'd rather yeah. fix up an old house and turn junk into something nice than build new. But there's just, there comes a point where it's just not worth it. Okay. All right, great. Thanks, Pat. Yeah, I, ha I have to say, with forgiveness, Joel, I went by on Saturday to do my own site visit and um, the house has been neglected and and yeah. the points that you mentioned are obvious to the eye. Well, the, um, the inside's worse. Yeah. Well, I didn't go inside, yeah. but, but, but the outside, it was clear that it, that it was neglected and, and had some issues. Um, but I'm wondering when was it last occupied? Well, it was occupied by the family's son, um, Matt for a few years after his mother passed away, but I don't know how he lived in there. I mean, it's, it's really antiquated and I don't know the whole, the, the bathroom is unexcavated, but the whole foundation under the bathroom is, is missing. I don't know how the pipes didn't freeze, you know? But, yeah, you know, and, pretty... and the foundation appears to be not stable. The so. front part is okay, but the back part is, is yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, I just I just wanted to share that with the commission that I, I usually try to do a site visit and I've been in and out of town. So I seized my moment so I would be yeah. familiar with the property. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Patty. Oh, you're still muted, Hattie. And One of Jill, the things you lower your hand, that'd be great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm pretty familiar with this neighborhood um, as I live in it myself currently. Um, I know the neighbors, some of them, um, people down the street. Um, I know the history of this neighborhood and the the card in the in the um historic resources uh, inventory is shows that it's very typical of the history of this particular neighborhood um uh which is which is really interesting in terms of Amherst history i think one of the things that's tricky about this building is its orientation and it's also very far back from the street most of the other houses on mcclelland are much closer to the street and to a sidewalk this house has an orientation to the side, like the house next door to it on the on the um, right hand side. Um, but it, that house is much closer to the to the road and to the street. So that whole feeling of streetscape is is present there as it is in number sixteen. Um, and I think that's that's a little bit challenging um, 
that but that's the least of the concerns i think um in terms of the current condition of this building the, this very steep staircase um for someone living alone you know with quite a long way to go to where the bathroom is from the bedroom upstairs um some of the upgrades that would have to be done that would make it viable <laughs> to resell or rent um it's small um yes that's appealing but I know Joel too, too, I should say that. Um, and I trust that what he would do with this property would be something that would be sympathetic to the history and architectural um, characteristics of, of the McClellan neighborhood. Thanks, Hetty. Um, yeah, I... Um... I, I always uh, try to think about how to best frame these um, discussions. Um, our, our main focus is whether the loss of this building would be a significant loss uh, given its current condition to uh, the town, uh, the town's history. Were this the last small worker house on this street that um, would erase that, that particular um, uh, building form entirely. I think um, that would be a, a different question. Um, I looked at the history uh, just to look at the um, the lives of the people who lived in it because that would be a um, an area of significance and nothing particularly stands out. It's like lovely worker housing. Um, I think we we're lucky that we have other worker housing or the small scale housing in town that's been preserved really well. And we probably want to think about. Um, Think about that in context of this particular building. Um, so my feeling is that it just does not rise to the level of uh, preferably to the level of preferably preserved. That uh, its loss would not be a huge loss for the the town's cultural fabric. Um, are there any other comments from commissioners? Um, seeing no further comments from commissioners, we can open it up to uh, public comment. Um, I see a hand, Matthew Glennon in the attendees. Can you promote him, Nate? Yeah, Matt, you could unmute yourself. Hello. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Thanks okay, for doing just that. A, yeah, thank you. Just a very quick comment. Uh, we're, uh, we own the, um, uh, 54 McClellan right next to this property mm -hmm. and we've been in the house we knew Ann Howard we knew Matt and we spent a lot of time on the property uh, just a couple quick comments uh, one is you know the property to me had some beautiful trees there before Joel bought it that were, were taken down by the electric company to me that was the character that that property sort of lost and now mm -hmm. it's just sort of this plain I, I really wish that had been looked at but aside from that uh, I'm actually glad that Joel is thinking about demolishing it. I've been involved with a property just like this, and I watched a floor collapse. I watched a roof collapse. And there's a lot of other things that are unhealthy in properties like this with mold and other things along those lines. So I think what Joel's proposing, and I can't speak to the historical significance of the building, but just for future occupants, I'm actually glad to see that he's um, going to invest in beautifying that property again. And uh, Joel, maybe you could just plant a couple of trees. That would be great. Yeah, I like trees. <laughs> That's it. Thank you for your support. You. Okay. Any other comment from the public? Seeing no comment, returning to the commission. Does anyone want to put forward a motion regarding the demolition request for? 68 McClellan. Um, I move to find 68 McClellan not preferably preserved. Okay. Uh, do I have a second to Michaela's motion? Pat seconds the motion. I'll just jump in quickly. We could amend the motion to say um, to also close the hearing. Okay. Uh, and to close the hearing. <laughs> so amended. <laughs> uh, any further discussion? Seeing no further discussion, I'll go to a roll call vote. Uh, Michaela? Aye. 
Uh, Pat? Aye. Antonia? Aye. Patty? Aye. And I vote aye also. So the uh, building is voted not preferably preserved and uh, the demolition can go forward. Do you have another comment, Joel? I have a question. Um, does that include the garage as well? Oh, we did not discuss the garage, but um, I, don't, I think uh, unless somebody has comment at this point, I am the historic garage. Um, <laughs> Uh, the, the reason here. I'm asking, the reason <laughs> I'm asking is because you guys probably may or may not know this, but the sewer line from P's place goes <laughs> under the driveway of this house, and I want to replace it because it's okay. an old clay line. And I, my guess, and I don't know this for certain, but I think it goes under the garage. Full disclosure, that's the sewer line that goes from my old house that Joel bought. That's 100% correct. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it scares me every day. That nobody knew about. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so. The town didn't even know about it. Um, no, unless there's further discussion, my only comment on the garage is that um, when I was in grad school, I did do a whole paper on uh, the development of garages in, in the automobile era. And like I said, I have a soft spot for them. We did vote um, to, to uh, I think, put a demolition on one. Uh, on oh, Fearing Street, maybe a uh, demolition delay. Um, I looked at the pictures of this garage. It does not have uh, really any remaining character defining features. Um, it's oddly missing a lot of windows that I would have expected from an earlier garage. Usually they were uh, around the time of uh, electricity, but um, the garage, the original garage doors aren't there. Um, so it does not speak to me at all. And I'm perfectly comfortable uh, with this um, uh, motion, including the garage, unless there's any comment from any other, uh, any other commission member. And I am seeing no comment from our commissioner members. So Joel, that confirms that the garage is included in the demolition permit. Thank, thank you. Sure. Nice to see you. It's great to see you. <laughs> uh, and again, you know, hopefully I'll never come back to your meeting asking to take a house down. I feel <laughs> terrible, but I think in this particular case, it's kind of justified. Uh, so thank you for your support. And uh, Nate might have some photos of what we're proposing. If you want to look at them, I think it'll be a nice addition to the, to the neighborhood. Right. Thank yep. you, Nate, for all your help. And thank you, Historic thank Commission. You. Thanks, Joel. Thank you. Have a nice evening. You too. You too. Bye bye. Okay, so now I think we need a motion to close public hearing. I make a motion to close public hearing. Uh, I'll second okay. the motion. Uh, I think we could just do a vote by hand. Okay, uh, hearing is now closed. And uh, Nate, I'm sorry, I don't have the agenda in front of me, but I'm. what's our next item? I don't think I have anything to report. Yeah, you know, we move into a public meeting. So there was announcements and then updates, uh, town funds for a historic survey plan. Um, okay. So if we went after announcements, I don't necessarily have any announcements. Um, I guess I did email the final preservation plan. PVPC uh, made some formatting adjustments. I think that's all set now. So that, that could be an announcement. Okay. Anyone else have any announcements? Okay. Uh, and then update on town funding for a preservation cert. No, a survey plan. Yeah, sure the, the, plan. I, yeah. I mean, we have uh, capital funding through the planning department. I just haven't, you know, done an, enough with it, but it's there if we need to. Um, I think Robin, you and I should probably sit down and try to scope it out, come up with a cost. Okay. But okay. It's, you know, if we need to do something like that. Okay. All right. Great. Yeah, I'll say that um, the local historic district commission has funding to study East Amherst, and so the uh, you know they're looking at I don't know it could be forty properties or so that will be putting out um, seeking quotes from consultants to you know research that and probably come up with new inventory forms or updated forms for those properties. So that'll you know be some forms that get updated, but. Okay. Yeah, no, I was looking more for um, right. a plan on kind of how to target how to target surveys going forward so that we could move into applying for um, 
MHC funding. Right. Yep. Okay. Um, next agenda item. Uh, inventory forms for recent demolitions. So we had uh, Main Street, Southeast Street, South Pleasant Street, and others. Um, you know, this kind of speaks to what Robin had said uh, earlier. You know, sometimes applicants just don't have the resources or the knowledge. And so, um, you know, I, you know, probably twice recently an owner has asked, you know, what, what can they do? Um, and it's interesting. They just, you know, even taking pictures from the street or the certain angles, front angles of the house, they just, it's something that they don't understand. And it, you know, it could be work for the commission. It could be work for staff, but it's something maybe we, you know, come up with a, a group that would do that just so we know that things are getting documented. Um, and, you know, I'm wondering if we might, when I first started on the commission, we regularly went on site visits prior to the hearing. I think that might be really helpful to start doing again because it prompts the research <laughs> and it gives an opportunity for the photographs so that all those things can be done. I mean, I know that that's, it's, um, it's challenging um, for everybody and um, I've, I've yet to make a stellar example of myself, <laughs> someone who comes phenomenally prepared with historic uh, materials. But I think that would be great if we could start scheduling um, regular site visits about two weeks out and hope that that would, you know, kind of prompt us, you know, as a group. And I, uh, making a note here myself to see if I can hold a little informal um, session among um, commission members who might want to come over to my house and learn how to um, access some of these materials. You know, at least develop a, a kind of skeleton of, of information to, to go forward with. Right, we could come up with a template, um, you know, the inventory form, the form B is one, but we could come up with some other things, uh, you know, in different yeah, research. Yeah, I mean, I have a yeah, I have a template that I use for, you know, it starts with the title chain. And then, you know, if one has access to ancestry.com, you can do pretty quick um, census searches to get, you know, some interesting information about, you know, the race of the people, the um, the occupations of the people that own the property, how long, um, and then the historical maps, all those things are probably, ancestry.com isn't publicly, publicly accessible, but, um, but the maps are and the deed searches are, and that helps to get the ball rolling. So, yeah, and I know uh, I think it's through the Jones Library. I can I access it differently, but I know you know the town we had um, had the town clerk scan records, uh, you know whether it was old town meeting records and town archives and uh, tax records, and I think that it had been character you know OCR, so it could be character recognized and keyword search. It's not great on old. Um, text or writing, but I think that's available publicly. And we had used CPA dollars years ago. And so, I mean, some of it, Robin would be also like, what are the local resources to use? So, you know, we yeah. have a few older maps, uh, you know, there's a Sanborn maps, Amherst College has right. Right. Uh, pretty great uh, kind of photographic inventory just of, around their campus. But, um, you know, coming up with that, I, you know, site visits would be great. I mean, some of it's hard for me and I don't want, I think standardizing it would be great. I don't want to, you know, if it's like 3 p.m. on the Tuesday, two weeks before or whatever, someday, and we just stick with it, um, that would work. But, you know, for I mean, the for existing site visit. For the site visit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, and I guess for the existing buildings, you know, there were some recent demolition requests. And so I don't know if we, you know, how we want to move forward with making sure those are documented or, um, you know, for instance, on Southeast Street, Amir had a few properties. He might come back, but you know, do we have enough information to? The idea would be right to get new inventory forms going for those. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, did we have a third demolition that I'm remembering? The um, Main Street is that that's not before us today. No, so I, I guess I could report to the commission at six uh, ninety nine Main Street, maybe uh, Dorsey Memorial. There was a three bay open, uh, let's say like storage barn attached yeah, to the like old a, building. Like a tractor shed or something. Yeah. Yeah. So where they, they used to unload uh, some of the stones there and the owner had, you know, only enclosed one picture and requested that it be demolished. And Robin and I went back and forth. The original building is actually um, kind of a mid or early 19th century. Uh, but the back part, it probably wasn't. And then, 
uh, the building commissioner and inspector went and that we had more pictures sent and the building was actually really dilapidated. It was, um, uh, you know, holes in the roof and actually wasn't really attached to the building. It was, oh, okay. you know, so we were saying that at first it met the definition of demolition, uh, but then upon further review, you know, it was declared an emergency demolition and taken down and okay. it was built. That didn't really have any impact on the building anyway. No, no, it wasn't. I mean, ironically, they, uh, they didn't even take the siding off the original building. They just nailed a, you know, like a ledger board right up to it and put the, you know, put the roof next to it and the walls weren't even attached to the main house or the main building. So it didn't impact the historic structure. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it, it was questionably, uh, 75 years old anyways, but because it met the definition in the front building is old, that it was right. maybe going to have to come to a hearing, but we, you know, didn't need to. Okay. Great. Interesting yeah, building yeah. though. Interesting building history. That was, I mean, am I looking at the, just for the commissioners know, am I looking at the maps at one point? It's, it's so interesting. It's like listed on the Sandra maps as a blacksmith shop and there's um, a fuel uh, station right next door. <laughs> It's like, what a great historical moment. <laughs> and then I think it becomes the store for the fuel station. Um, so might be something worth it. I don't, I don't think it has a form B it might be worth putting, putting on our inventory. It's always good when things come before us and we kind of get started on that. Okay. Rest of the agenda. I have no updates. So we had a discussion of one and five year goals. And I think, you know, we could look at the final plan again, but we had, you know, like a barn program, uh, macros yeah. updates, modern structures list. So that kind of falls into the previous um, items. But, you know, I think it, Robin, you had sent around that chart and maybe with Jacinta, we could send around again or, you know, what some of the goals or ideas were. And then coupled with the new preservation plan, what the commission might want to focus on in the next, you know, year or two. Yeah, yeah, that was really, I mean, that's definitely in my um, to-do list and I haven't gotten to it and I need to get to it. <laughs> so. I know, I was talking with um, another staff member today about um, goats and sheep instead of mowers and they said, yeah, well, they looked into it too a while ago and it just was too expensive and they tried it um, on conservation land. But, you know, it reminds me of our conversation we have periodically about West Cemetery or other areas. Right. <laughs> right. It, it just seems it's crazy that it's so difficult to be able to, to graze there. Uh, but, you know, so. right, especially with that full fence and two gates, right? <laughs> be the easiest thing in the world. Just let them yeah. in there and close the gates. <laughs> I think, yeah, now that we have the preservation plan, I mean, I think some of the things are the commission can do, you know, without a lot of maybe outside resources or at least get them started. And then whether it leads to a CPA uh, request this fall, I mean, the CPA uh, process starts now in September or the proposals are due pretty soon. But if, you know, the next few months, the commission looks at the plan and has ideas, there could be a request to have funding next summer. Okay. Okay, guys. Oh, hate to kick that can down another month, but there it is. Are we up to unanticipated items yet? <laughs> we talked about the you know preservation restrictions, and so you know oh, right. we talked a number of times, and we're you know we have a template for a local restriction. So for most CPA requests, it's not going to be going to mass historic for a permanent restriction or a mass historic approved restriction, and that'll make it uh, easier and hopefully expedite some of the projects. So, oh, so that's an official position of the town now? Yeah, I mean, we've we've worked with, we're writing it as a 99 year restriction. Uh, and so, you know, we I've um, worked with K, our, the attorneys at KP Law. And so, yep. you know, I think the bigger question is moving forward, um, you know, would there be more of a policy on amount of funding um, allocated to a private entity, right? So we funded the steeple restoration at JCA and then at South Congregational Church for a far, fair amount of money. And, you know, we've had requests now from private homeowners to do uh, work on, on private residences. And some may or may not be significant to the town's history, but, you know, I think the request might come in this year, you know, and, you know, over $200,000. And so a lot of communities are capping an individual request or whether it's for a lifetime or for five years just to you know, manage that. And so I think 
you know, staff. Wait, lifetime, that, lifetime or five years, meaning? That, you know, if a homeowner came in and wanted $250,000 to fix their house, either oh, they okay. they can't come back again or they might cap it at $125,000. Um, right, right. And, you know, I, it's an interesting question. We've often asked that, um, you know, for instance, we the town put in a big request a number of years ago for slate roofs in a few buildings, and it was hundreds of thousands of dollars. And the commission said, well, could the town put it in a capital request? And is there ways to, you know, pull together different um, pots of money? And it, and it is difficult, but, you know, I, I, I'm anticipating that this year we might have a few requests from private entities for a large amount of money. And yeah. I'm not saying it's not worth it. I just think, you know, sometimes the CPA committee just says, well, is it eligible? yes let's vote on it but maybe the commission could provide guidance in terms of you know is there a a ratio of funding to replacement value or assessed value or something i just you know i think it makes yeah. it different. yeah i was thinking about that i'm glad that you brought that up because i was thinking about that um in regard to um for other commission members um uh like when so in my work at MHC, I see some of the tax credit program stuff. And one of the big focuses is on character defining features. And I thought that that might be really important language for um, kind of limiting the scope of what um, a preservation, a CPA preservation funding could do. So, um, you know, for example, in my old house on Halleck Street, it has the oval um, window in the Gable Peak um, that's probably original to the building that really could use um, um, reglazing and repainting. Like that's the sort of thing that I think would be like a nice small character defining feature CPA grant. Whereas the applicant that we had before us who was requesting uh, moving their entire structure, it doesn't quite fall under character defining features. So that might be one way to limit it, you know, to kind of get people just, you know, if, if individual homeowners were interested in preserving something very specific about their house, the door, a porch railing. Um, I know that we had talked uh, previously with the um, Conkey Stevens has the sale in place people about uh, a restoration of uh, based on the remnants left of the um, very character defining um, iron fencing that was taken out by uh, an automobile and there are pieces remaining in the basement of the building. Um, so that's that's one thought um, that would sort of limit the scope of what people might be able to request. I mean, I think a paint job, um, a paint job gets really tricky. I mean, it's definitely, if, you know, there's enough deterior, uh, de deteriorated maintenance, um, then you're talking about a paint job being restorative to the clapboards underneath. I mean, a regular paint job, no, so. Um, those are some of the, the ideas that we, you know, could think about. Yeah, and I, and I think it would be helpful for the commission. And then also, like I said, for the CPA committee, if there's even just a few parameters or criteria. So I think, you know, especially in the last few years, the CPA committee uh, has a lot more requests than they can fund and they try to fund all of them. And so, you know, with um, what was the North Congregational Church, now it's the Korean uh, Zion AME Church. Okay. We, you know, they held money in reserve and then asked that they, work with a contractor, staff met with them a number of times, and they came back with a new plan. And so it took almost a whole year for them to determine right. kind of the best approach to restore the roof. And so, but, you know, you know, I have a feeling there may be some other homeowners who say, well, oh, the CPA money is really about preserving the structure, you know, right, I need a new foundation. You know, I have an old field stone, rubble foundation and brick and, and I'd like a new foundation. And, you know, and that's not character defining feature. <laughs> you know, maybe, oh, you know, maybe eligible, may not. And so I think that, you know, for right. the CPA committee, they just might be like saying, well, well, yeah, it's an old house. It's significant to the town. Is it, you know, do we fund that? And, you know, the commission at some point does review CPA uh, proposals, but it might be good to have a few, kind of a few, like I said, some guidelines. And then, you know, for in terms of the restriction, you know, and at least they'd be 30 years and at most they'd be 99. But the idea is that the statute doesn't require a restriction, a preservation restriction, unless you acquire a property. So technically you buy it for historic purposes, which rarely happens. And so, you know, what the commission has talked about over the last like two years is that 
most applicants would probably be back anyways within 30 years <laughs> or, you know, and the idea is the restriction would just be renewed. And so there'd always be a restriction on some of these properties because, you know, even if it was 50 years, they'd probably be back within 50 years. And so the idea of having something in perpetuity, uh, you know, if, like Robin said, if we're not monitoring it and uh, more, I think for the town, it was more about, well, you know, depending on the level of funding, what's the appropriate term, but, you know, I think more importantly is how do we kind of prioritize projects moving forward if we're getting a lot of requests? Yeah, I think that's important. And I think, I mean, the other thing that I, I you know, I asked sort of perennially is um, whether the town has a plan for, because the town and, and potentially the historical commission becomes the holder of the preservation restriction. And what that means, it took me several years to understand this. What that means is that the historical commission is responsible for making sure that the people who've taken money from the town to preserve an aspect of their structure as we've defined it, we have to be the ones to make sure that they're not in violation of that. And generally like a, a group like a Historic New England that holds a lot of preservation restrictions, they visit properties yearly. Um, and it's, you know, it's not a, it's not a policing, it's a, you know, it's a, a collaborative effort to um, best preserve the building. It doesn't necessarily eliminate changes to the building that might become necessary, but um, I don't see the point of having preservation restrictions if they're never, if they're never <laughs> monitored, <laughs> like what's the point of a preservation restriction if they're never monitored? The only thing that it does uh, I mean, the first thing that I do, that that it does, I suppose, is the the, the thing that that the actual funding is for. But um, I mean, the the funds, but the pres the point of the preservation restriction is to make sure that the character defining features of that property are not lost. That's the deal. You get the money. We make sure you don't put in vinyl windows without consulting us and getting our permission first. You know, not that you might get our permission, you might not. But um, so that I think the town, it would be really useful for the town to kind of think about it as, you know, who do they really want to be in charge of that kind of a program? I mean, at Historic New England, somebody, there's like one person, it's their job. Um, whereas um, putting it in the hands of the commission can be challenging if you don't have people on the commission with enough technical expertise or time or wherewithal to actually do enforcement. So um, that's my perennial two cents on that. It's mostly to meet. <laughs> but I mean, but it does, you know, I mean, as we like, we just went through um, where we were uh, responsible for going through the preservation restriction on the Jones Library. So that's a perfect example. Like, you know, we should essentially be doing some sort of monitoring every year. Or I don't know, maybe not. Maybe just a better communication with owners that like, you know, they should know that if they're going to make changes to the property, they should come to us first as a condition of the restriction. Yeah, no, I think we have some new permitting software in town and it's, I think, probably here to stay at least for, you know, a number of years. And so uh, the, another planner, Greg, had mentioned, we're talking about doing monitoring for affordable units and we're going to ask IT about it. And so, you know, Robin, as you're talking, I was like, oh, could we also have kind of a workflow for historic preservation restrictions and right. so you know there's not too many right now for the town and we could set it up what's nice about this system is it um can link to building permits it can auto renew an email or contact property owners and it can send yeah. reminder send reminders to staff or to others and so we could try to set up a workflow um and i think that yeah i think it's worth pursuing just because you know yeah, i think so you, since we have restrictions in place that we could just already right assign it to and kind of beta test it right yeah i was gonna say the uu you know they do a great job of emailing me um you know their program a few times a year as asked and they you know they make sure that the public can see the window and they have you know different uh hours and they're you know they're really great about that but um you know other other places that have restrictions you know it might be less frequent so right. it'd be good to Okay. Uh, what's next? Is it, are we on, are we up to unanticipated items yet? Yes. <laughs> okay. Any unanticipated items? I'm here. Um, I think then our next uh, next item of business would to be find my calendar here. Um, set our next meeting for July. Do you have a proposed date, Nate? 
Uh, I don't necessarily. I mean, um, I'm out the first week in July. We could meet the next week, the week of July, the 8th, July 8th. Yep, that works for me. The 8th works for me. Okay. Uh, yep, yep. Everybody good with the 8th? Okay, so the next meeting, I will let um, Mylon know. The next meeting is scheduled for the 8th at 6.30. Right. There is a, a hand raised. Oh, a hand raised. Public comment. Hey, Hilda, you can oh, unmute uh, yourself. Hilda has, has a public comment. Um, hi, Hilda. First, hi. My first question has to do with, uh, I think it's called the PNF, but I don't remember exactly, the not 292 page form that was sent to Mass Historical about Jones Library. And I would like to follow up on that since I wrote rather a lengthy article about it in Indy. Um, has anybody heard back from Mass Historical? Nate, Nate that's an answer for you. I have to be recused on this one. Yeah. Um... I don't we know the town didn't submit it it's the project's uh, sponsor so the jones library submitted the project notification form the town was copied uh i, I i'd have to go uh, look to see if we did get a response there was an interim response from the uh state and then i don't know if there was a final determination made uh i'm very concerned about some of the very insensitive comments that are being considered right now by the trustees and i'm hoping you guys might have some clout if needed to preserve the interior of the 1928 building i'm very upset about their total insensitivity to the quality of the workmanship that was very important to to Samuel Minot Jones when he built the building. Quality wood, quality craftsmanship, uh, like you never see nowadays, and they want to rip it all out. And I guess related to that, do they have to um, mitigate the asbestos if they don't touch it and just leave the woodwork where it is? Or that's probably not your daily work. Anyway, I'm concerned that they want to rip it all out and throw it away and hope somebody will help defeat that idea. Yeah, Hilda, I would, um, you could call the, you know, the building commissioner or an inspector about the asbestos. I'm not sure. I, you know, you can encapsulate it and do things with it, but depending on what they're doing with the walls, you know, I think their concern is that the trim would have asbestos on it uh, because of, you know, I think it sounds like it must be um, like uh, asbestos in the plaster. So that's, yeah, but if they don't touch it, do they have to uh, ameliorate it if they leave it alone? Yeah, I, I, you know, I don't, yeah, I'm not sure exactly, you know, how, you know, as long as it's not typically or usually as long as it's, um, you know, not friable, right? It's not chipping or anything and you can somehow encapsulate it and there's different ways to do that then it you can you could leave it in place but i don't i don't know the details for this kind of treatment well um, take take your comment hilda thank you <laughs> what did you ask what did you say i didn't hear it i said i said we take your comment on our, on the record here so thank you for your for your input well i just hope you guys will help fight that fight with us you know, it's all the old trustees that want to save the building. The new trustees don't care less, it seems. But yeah, I can't. Um, I can't speak for myself personally because I'm recused on anything related to the Jones Library due to my employment. But I do know that um, uh, the preservation restriction comes before comes before and has come before the Historical Commission, and there are lengthy uh, discussions that happen here around all the changes that. Um, uh, may or may not take place on that building. So um, keep keep tuned into to any any meetings. So anyway, this. they can't take the woodwork out and get rid of it without coming back to you. Is that what you're saying? Well, the the restriction typically doesn't cover the interior. The commission reviewed it because of tax credits and other funding, uh, and it may be that Mass Historic may ask them to come back um, for um, depending on the project, and so. Uh, you know, it, 
I think we'd have to wait and see exactly what what's being proposed. I that's all I can say. Okay. Well, thank you, Hilda. Well, put up the good fight, will you? <laughs> yeah. Care. So it could, it could be um, to Hilda's point. If at the next meeting, you know, an agenda item could be an update on the Jones Library project uh, to learn more about it. You know, there's been some articles online. And I'd be in favor of that. Yeah. Um. Because I, from what I've read, it sounds like one of the things they're trying to do to get further reductions in the costs uh, for going out to another bid process is to remove all of the original 1928 molding, or to somehow work around it, and so that the pieces that are where the moldings are wouldn't actually have any asbestos abatement, which I can't quite envision. And like Nate, I have no expertise at all, but I know that that's that's being that's in in reports I've read. Um, that's up for grabs, and I know that the topic is being um, discussed tonight at town council, um, and they had a public forum planned for budget related items before that this evening. So for all I know, it's come up already. I've got it on, on the DVR to watch. Thank you. When I get, Thanks, so when I get done with this. I bet. Yeah, you're a trooper. <laughs> hey, I feel very strongly about it. I know I you do. Very, I feel yeah. very strongly about North Church and every day I go by it's deteriorated more. And um, I will one, reason I fixed, one of the reasons I fixed up the John, the North Amherst Library is it made me sick to drive through that intersection. It's a gateway to the town and it, it was looking very bad. So anyway, put up the good fight with us. We need more. We need your support. Thanks, Hilda. Okay. Have a good night. You too. <laughs> Got to turn on the, the other tape and listen to what they're talking about. <laughs> right. I'm glad it's not on the Celtics night. That's all I can say. Me too. It's <laughs> six or the seventh, I think, first game. Six, Thursday. Right. Well, good thing we didn't schedule our meeting that evening then, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> So we have a meeting date. We, we have do. a meeting date. I believe that uh, with that, uh, I can call us adjourned at 8 1 p.m. unless Nate has anything else. We're good. No? Okay. All right. Jacinta, thank you for joining us. Hope we didn't scare you away. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bye. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.